So see, there is a very old concept. You know the mathematician Lapnov. Okay, you might have heard about him. So Lapnov gave his theory in uh, most probably in 1892 or so, if I remember the year correctly. But it was around that time, if I am not correct. So he gave a Lapnov equation, and using that, we try to understand the stability of time varying systems. The the system in which uh, the coefficients of the differential equation may change with time. Okay, like uh, we have. Um, uh, do you have? Do you have? Uh, no, I will. I will. Yeah, I will just write there so that everybody understands. So, so, so let us say that I will write uh, an th order derivative. So. <coughs> like this okay so now the point is that uh, these coefficients a i is they may depend on time okay this is so there they talk about its stability now suppose this is having similar something right hand side in terms of so let me let me say this is some uh, r p p is that d d t of thing and y is some r m um, so u so some variable depend independent variable and dependent variable okay now they talk about simple root of this or uh, multiple roots of this so i was trying to understand but it was little difficult for me or rather it is so simple that i am not able to understand many times these kind of things happen what do you think so so uh, means if let us say this is zero so it gives rise to you know s power n uh, ah, so ys just... plus s n minus 1 ys and uh, so on but uh, so no, no sorry a, a also is missing we cannot take laplace transform directly so that is the difficulty so actually what yeah so what we often do uh, what i was taught was that we don't often use the phosphate to solve these but instead of very easy parameters i yeah. know there's a different meaning here but essentially please for a second order equation. Yeah, you can you can keep it and uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, for the second or for a second order differential equation, it should be something like uh, the particular solution is minus. Oh wait, no, this is a modulus equation. So wait, let's see. Right. Okay. So first, oh, I think you're right. We would have this always using either Laplace waveforms or power smoothies. So let's see. I think picking a Laplace waveforms might be a little bit inefficient because that only works very well when uh, these are constants. But let's see. They they are time dependent. They are not constants, so that yeah. makes it little difficult. Yeah, so. because of course. Oh, I think I understand. So, what you're saying is essentially everything that satisfies. Yes, one. It can to zero means uh, it will be some time function, but whether that time function, what kind of variations it will have depending upon the various coefficients. Essentially, that is the problem of time. Okay, so essentially, we're just trying to find the behavior of the function as it continues. So can I erase this? Please, please. Okay. Uh, this is the smallest one. So essentially, the situation is instead of taking the Laplace transform, I'll assume the function to be a Taylor series, a n t to the a t 
to the algae you're using. So essentially, that all we have to do is count or we can take if you take. So what I would do is write this equation out as zero is equal to the sum of I think this would be n factorial times right. Very sure. I'm. I'm trying to guess something. F, F, Y, and P. And then say they say that this uh, equation like this. Its solution. Okay. Its solution is Y in some phi times. Uh, phi times initial Y. And uh, it is obtained by solving. Some matrix uh, n by n matrix and uh, uh, phi itself. Mm. This is very interesting. Let me think about this. No, so, probably this mm. is this is uh, something I I am learning only last week, so that is why my knowledge is very incomplete. Okay, to discuss ah. it. Okay, so essentially we are taking the derivative of this. So, so each component of the derivative of y is studied as a vector function. That's, that's each component of yeah, the. So that derivative, see, that y is one component, y dash is another component. So this, this is meant to mean the, uh, the first derivative. Yes, this is first derivative, okay. second derivative. So my difficulty here is, is this not simply why? Uh, you are right, you are right. They are y dash, y double dash, and etc. Mm. Uh, this is the So we write, so this is a vector function or a scalar function? This, is, this becomes a vector function because each of them is a first derivative. So first row is first derivative of y, second row is uh, first derivative of y prime, second third row is second derivative of y two prime. But the second derivative of what over space or over time? Each one of them is so it thinks of the n-dimensional coordinates in which different y's are different axes. So y is one axis. Y uh, one d y by d t is another axis, d two y by d t square is the third axis, and so on. Hmm. And okay. So and then it forms a vector space of n dimensions. Okay. So. So yeah, this is the. Mm, let's see. So then, if these are at, okay, so let's see. We are expressing these as scalars. No, uh, so, so yes, one, one. You are right. You are right. Each one is coordinate, and oh, one okay. is scalar. I think what we are meaning to write here is a zero y a one, and of course uh, these are functions of t. But uh, so know. actually, in the population, this is they go in the matrix. Okay. They somehow go in the matrix and then uh, they say that it can be easily solved. 
But anyway, uh, it is... Okay, so what is phi here? It is, it is something which they introduced for the purpose of solving and they call it state transition matrix. Mm. Okay, this is a little bit difficult. Let me think about it. So, no, it's all right. It's all right. So maybe we can have some other uh, topic to think, uh, Dr. Radhesham or Dr. Dinesh, which will be interesting for everybody. Let me see. So, no, I am not asking you a problem. It is just an interaction going on between us. I know. I am still thinking. So, How do we express my own, the only thought that comes to mind is possibly something like this. I don't know if it will work, but A0, A1, A2, AN, A0 prime, A1 prime, A2 prime. Could be, could be all the way to A0 N, A1 N, A2 N, A N N. Could be. Something in that way. But we do not know whether we can differentiate all those up to nth derivative. Uh, I was assuming this was <laughs> So we have to assume and then we can write like that. Yeah. I don't think any, any of this would work if it's not because in Many of those could be constant also. It's not necessary that all coefficients will vary with time. Well, if Some of them could be constant. If so any of them are constant, that Could be, mean. could be. I'm taking a general case, could be anything. If they could so, be, then it would just be zero. So I don't yeah, see any So history. many elements can become zero subsequently. Yeah. Would, uh, that, I think, makes it a lot more convenient for us, in fact. Mm -hmm. So then, what are we solving for? It's Finally, we want y. y as a function of time. Mm. Okay. That y, y is required as a function of time. That is quite difficult. I feel that... No, that probably you mm. might not have come. Please be seated. I think uh, you <laughs> might be tired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I so, think, yeah. so, what I am trying to say is that this is altogether a different subject. We study it uh, to find out the uh, stability of any system. So the system is described by one nth order equation. It can be first order, second order, third order, etc. And uh, we we try to find the conditions on A's so that this system will have a stable response. So at t tending to infinity, it will it will become zero. In in some manner, it will vary, but finally, it will become zero given a non-zero initial condition. I think that then the best way to solve this is po possibly through power series uh, or through this matrix method. Yeah. So, so when, uh, when uh, this A's coefficients are constant, we simply take Laplace transform yeah. and uh, we uh, express the whole thing uh, as an uh, polynomial, an F degree polynomial. We solve for its roots and uh, then we that uh, location of the roots if it has negative real parts then it says that it will become zero at t tending to infinity and so, uh, if, yeah. if there are some complex roots then it will have oscillatory behavior and it will become uh, zero oh so what we are doing is we are assuming <coughs> a a n is a polynomial right okay that makes things colossally easier, actually, because then we can always just take the power series. Because no matter what degree this is, then let's just turn up some space. Don't worry, I'm, I'm just going to erase yeah, this for one moment. So, for example, if we had something like, and this is of course an example, but t squared y prime prime y double prime plus t y prime plus y, which of course satisfies our requirement, and of course actually we can flip this around since this clearly doesn't have anything in front of it. So if we were to write something like this, we can very easily solve yes. it. Yes, yes, so what uh, in, in case of constant coefficients, we express y on exponential basis. So y is summation of uh, e power lambda. Uh, 
some coefficients into e power lambda t. Yeah, of course, the, the exact method. Because so, when it is constant, so if, it, if they are not constant, still the expression can be a linear combination of exponential terms. <coughs> ah, I feel that, okay, let me just, let me attempt to solve a very simple example. This example, of course, Yeah. this is just uh, this. n plus this plus this, which of course becomes n squared minus n plus n plus <coughs> 1. Uh, n squared plus 1, a n t n. And of course, this always has to be equal to 0. So in this case, I'm decently sure we have n squared plus 1 a n t n is equal to 0, or in other words, this is equal to 0, which gives us the fact that a n is equal to 0 for all n, which makes the solution to this equal to just 0. And so, but that is the trivial solution. Yeah. If we assume all n's to be 0, that's a trivial solution. Then we can... Excuse me. for this specific case, where it's always zero. If we have something like this, for example, let's multiply this by a constant. If we have something like this, we can write... Could be, could be. Yeah, but no matter what it is, since this is a polynomial, that means we can always solve it using the power series method. Because otherwise, if it is, for example, so that's that's right. Uh, uh, it is the solution is always an infinite series. That is true. And then we can use the infinite series. But only we we attempt a solution which is a closed series, which is not infinite series. Well, uh, what we could do is attempt to simplify the infinite series by writing it in the form of a Taylor series, of course, and then taking the and then simplifying it into the function that it is a Taylor series of. So, of course, that's not very easy done for everything, but I think it will be more viable than this method. Yes.